I want to start this video because this is going to be an updating video. I'm going to tell you what's been happening here. I'm going to share a little story and also talk about where this channel is going to go. But before I do that, I want to do a special thank you to Karen Howard because I took some time off and she was kind enough to write me and uh, send me some encouragement and some uh, right words at the right time that really helped me out. And so thank you, Karen. You've always been very kind to me here and, uh, and it's very much appreciated. So I had a computer problem that stalled me from making videos and uh, the fellow came and helped me with it yesterday and so I understand a lot more about my computer than I did before. I'm not so sure it was a computer error that which was my problem as much as it was human error, which is not much of a surprise knowing me. Uh, but I wanted to show you what I've been doing while I haven't been making videos. I am obsessed with gallus and puzzles. You know I don't make any money from this YouTube channel, so that's not what this is about. But these rainbow puzzles, this is a 500 piece puzzle. I am absolutely obsessed with them. There's this one. These cost about $14 a piece, which is not very expensive when it comes to puzzles, uh, especially if you compare it to Ravensburgers. And I haven't been very happy with Ravensburgers because Ravensburgers don't have this kind of colorful art array. And also, um, nine times out of 10, they arrive with missing pieces, which is really annoying to me. But I'm really enjoying these uh, rainbow puzzles. And I think they're helping me with my uh, visual discrimination skills. And of course, this puzzle that I've shared before, you know, the fantastic orb. I have wanted to give this as a gift to so many people in the last few months, and it's, it's completely sold out. It's, it's uh, I, you know, I'm on a mailing list. If it ever comes back, I would love to, uh, to purchase it again and, and certainly give it as a gift. But um, and this is not made by Gallison. This is made by, I think it's called PlayStation or something. But uh, like I said, they're completely sold out. Uh, so that's what I've been doing. Um, I have also been watching endless New York City Housewives. I don't know why, but that's what I've been doing. Not proud, not proud. <laughs> now it's time to get back to work and think about the channel. So um, you saw the jigsaw puzzles. The other thing I've been doing is we're doing a major clean out of the house. My, my daughter lived here during the, the past year and she moved out to her new place. So all of her stuff is now completely out of this house. And of course, what that did was show us that uh, we have more stuff than we need in our own home. And so we've been combing through it, which is a little bit like an archeological dig. I mean, when you look back, you know, you, you, you start running into stuff that you were involved in when you were 20 years old. I mean, there are I, I, wedding presents. <laughs> I mean, if you have a wedding present and you've been married for nearly 40 years and you've never used it, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to let go. So I've got uh, one of those big trucks coming in a couple of days and, uh, and they're going to haul a, a lot of stuff away. It's not going to the trash. It's a very responsible company. And so what they do is they find appropriate homes for, for the stuff that you have. So uh, my conscience is pretty clear, clean on that. Now I want to talk about where this channel is going to go and then I'll tell you a little story. This channel, what I'm going to start doing is sharing some other artists' work because I'm friends with lots of artists and uh, they're contemporary and they're so fabulous. They're as good as anything that you would see in the museum and I just don't think that people hear about them. You know, we hear about each other but you know, it's a, it can be a really small community. So I already have several people who are willing to let me share their work and I'll share their contact information as well. Incredible, beautiful work and also incredibly affordable. And I have my own art collection, which has, <laughs> I think every one of these people in it. The thing that I plan to do is share video tips, you know, how to do this video, because maybe you want to do it. Um, I am not technical in any way, but, um, but I will share the little tips that I've learned along the way. And what I'm going to do in the month of May is I'm going to dedicate the month of May to peonies. I started painting because I really wanted to be able to paint a peony. And I, I think it's probably something that people, if they know my work at all, they know me for painting peonies. And so I'm going to dedicate the month of May to peonies and we will be painting them. And I hope to be able to engage you in that as well and provide you photographic references so that you can paint along. I think that would be really fun. And of course, I'll show you my gardens and, and the transition of the peonies as they come and go. So now I want to tell you a story because I'm in an art group and the funniest story came up yesterday and I asked if I could share it and, uh, 
and the person was kind enough to let me share it. I'm not going to mention names because you never know. So we were talking about commissions. I, I, I used to paint, I, as I said, have said before on this channel, I used to paint dogs, commissioned dogs. I, I painted probably 10 a month. I mean, a lot, a lot of dogs and cats, any pet really, but it tended to be dogs and cats. And, um, and I, got, I got pretty good at doing it. And then I decided that I didn't want to do it anymore. So that's fine. The reason I'm bringing it up is that, uh, that I understand what it feels like when someone gives you a commission and their heart is in it and they really want it to turn out well. And so, um, you know, there's a little bit of pressure as compared to if I was just going to paint my dog because I felt like painting my dog that day. So this gal had a commission to do and <laughs> it was not a dog or a cat. It was a llama. And the funniest thing about it is... Um, she likes or prefers to be able to take photographs herself of the animal that she's going to paint because she can make, make a better composition that way. And she did not have the opportunity to do it in this case. The llama had died the day before. And so <laughs> she couldn't take any pictures of this llama. And the picture that she was given was of, um, just picture this, you know, a dark brown llama in a dark brown stall with no light on it at all. You know, just how are you gonna find the value shapes? And her heart kind of sunk when she saw this picture because, you know, these people really wanted to have a, a memory of their pet. And it's a little bit of a challenge because it's a llama, not, you know, the bone structure is gonna be a little bit different. And now there's absolutely no visual information to go from. And poor gal, you know, she was describing just how she just uh, worked so hard on it. And I know her and I know she would have worked hours and hours and hours. Uh, I saw it. I think it turned out great, but um, you know she's hard. She's uh, you know how we all feel about our art is maybe not exactly what we want it to be. But I thought that that's uh, you know I never had to paint a llama, and I was really grateful for that. And um, one of the things that came up when we were talking about commissions in the group is that in general, if you if you get a commission, it's really important to tell people you know when you hand the work over and say you know I really I, this turned out great. You know I really love it or. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad I could have this opportunity to preserve this memory for you. Something like that, anything that's positive. But the worst thing that you can do is sort of be apologetic about it. Like, well, I hope you like it or it didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to. That is just poison. Um, don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. So another gal had a commission story that she shared. Uh, she was asked to do a commission of someone's home. And oftentimes that too is very personal. And in this case, and you might know this if you know northeastern architecture where I live. There's a sort of a typical, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a typical look of a, a home here in Vermont, it, a center cape sort of thing. You know, you have a center door, a couple of windows on either side, and basically, it, it's it's a basic box. <laughs> There's just not a lot you can do with it, you know? Um, and so, which is one of the reasons why I think, especially here, we do a lot of landscaping to soften the look of a home um, and sort of nestle it in, in a way that the, um, that, that the landscape just doesn't provide naturally. Or it can be, you know, completely surrounded by trees coming in and then, and then it's even more difficult because you can't, it, you know, it's harder to find forms. So anyway, she had to paint this house. It was a brown house and it had um, nothing around it, you know, no trees. If you just imagine, this can sometimes happen with, um, with new builds where, you know, there'll be an open field and it looks like someone just plunked a house down in the middle of it as if they were playing, you know, playing a, you're on a, a, a game board of some kind, you know, Monopoly, here comes the house. So the house looked like this and she, and she so that was a photograph she was given and she just said, I just, you know, I can't make anything out of this which is because you want to, you know, someone's hired you because they like your work. And so you want it to be reflective of your work. And if you're kind of, your hands are tied because the actual subject is something that you would never choose and, and is really impossible to interpret through your style, then you really have a conundrum. So what she did was took the pressure off herself by saying she wouldn't accept any payment for it. And that sometimes helps with the pressure. And then she went and took a, took some pictures of the, the home itself. And she said she was lucky enough that the owner came out at one point uh, and was sort of in the right position at the right time for her to be able to see, oh, I can make this into a painting. And so that's how she solved that problem. 
Um, but we all did agree there are certain things that come up around commissions that can be particularly challenging. I found with dogs, especially that people, um, but because I did so many dogs, people were pretty happy with them. They kind of knew. I never had a complaint actually. People had seen enough of my pet portraits that they sort of knew what to expect. So I never had someone um, be unhappy because they, they, you know they, their expectations were met. Where where it is different for me, and I don't know if it is for other people, was when I would do uh, people pictures. <laughs> people are very picky. Uh, they're not as picky about the pictures of uh, other people as they are picky about pictures of themselves. And there's sort of this joke among artists, or I don't know where it comes from, but you know, it says always when you have a commission, make the person 10 years younger and 10 pounds lighter. So there's something about that, which is true. You know, we, we don't always see ourselves exactly the way we see ourselves. And so, um, I mean, exactly the way we are. So lots of times in a commission, someone will give you a photograph, which either won't give you enough of the information you need, or they don't quite realize how you're going to see it. And, you know, if you really accurately portray what they see, I did one, I remember where um, a gal was in a position, you know, that position when you're a little, she was lying on a couch. When you're lying on a couch, it's not the best angle. So her chin, you know, there were two chins there, which can happen when you lie down, which is why, you know, who does a zoom lying down, right? You want to be <laughs> full on if you can. That's the most flattering place to be. Or three quarter angle might be the most flattering. But um, and so I accurately did the the portrait and I, you know, checked with other people who, you know, does this look, you know, here's the photograph. Does this look like this person? And I said, yeah, yeah, it does. And um, I gave it to the husband who was going to give it to the wife for Christmas. And he said, oh, she won't like this. And I said, why? He said, because she's got two chins. And I thought, yeah, she does. And she does in the picture too. So I had to go back <laughs> and redo it so that there was only one chin. And it made me more sensitive realizing, wow, you really have to look at it not with the eye of accuracy as much as with the eye of flattery. So that's another challenge with commissions. So that's an update of what's happening around here. I really want to know how you're doing as the world is starting to open up and it's starting to be springtime. And as I'm saying it's springtime, it is, it's snowing here. We've had, a beautiful, we've had uh, 10 days of beautiful weather. I shouldn't complain. We've sat out in the backyard. We've heard birds. Definitely spring has sprung around here. But today is typical of Vermont. You know, it takes one step forward and three steps back. And so today it's snowing, but it won't last. Well, thank you again for those of you who did write or contact me about where did I go and what was happening. Uh, like I said, I'm absolutely fine. Uh, I've been assured by my art friends that in the creative process, it will circle around that you will have sort of some sometimes when you want to step away and, and times when you can come back reinvent. I think I haven't been in the art game enough times to know that that cycle will occur. I'm going to have some faith in that, but I'm definitely committed to uh, the place where this channel is going to go, which is to uh, share more artists, definitely do the month of May and make that a peony month and give you some video tips. Of course, just regular painting as well, because, you know, value shape painting is where I live and, and what I love to do. So please share with me if there's something that you would like to uh, see or, uh, or how you're doing as we're coming over now turning into almost 18 months of of the world being different than it was so remember to keep the white your paper white your paint's wet mask for value mix for color and i hope that there are no llama commissions in your future <laughs> and i'll see you next time bye bye